Coming up, the White Sox and Dodgers won against big rivals on Tuesday. This is Locked On Now MLB. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are Locked On Now. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now MLB. Local experts weighing in on the biggest stories in baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We've got our Locked On MLB hosts here to recap everything for you in baseball from Tuesday. But we start out with the Yankees, whose win streak lived to see another day in the biggest game. The biggest game. The win streak isn't over just yet. New York made it to 11 games in a row with a win against Toronto and the Blue Jays on Tuesday. Our Locked On Yankees host is even starting to get surprised by how good New York has looked as of late. This is Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees, and the Yankees beat the Blue Jays tonight in Rogers Center 9-1. That's unexpected. It's their 11th win in a row. They won the series. They go for the sweep on Wednesday. Aaron Judge got to Alec Manoa for the first time in 11 at-bats and hit a home run to tie the game. And then the Yankees unloaded on the Blue Jays in the seventh inning, scoring six runs. And then Giancarlo Stanton joined the home run party in the ninth inning to really pull away and make it 9-1. And even stranger, Wandy Peralta picked off Alejandro Kirk on first base. What was he doing? Anyway, <laughs> I'm still in shock that this game went the way it went. I don't know, everything's happening for the Yankees, and I'm slightly worried that it's happening this soon in the season, but there is precedent here. They're having one of their best starts in franchise history, and other teams that have had starts close to 18-6, 98, 2003, 1939... Those were pretty good years for the Yankees. So I'll have a complete recap of this game on the next Locked On Yankees, along with a preview of the finale from Rogers Center. So tune in. The Chicago White Sox overcame the elements on the north side to beat their crosstown rival, the Cubs, on Tuesday. As the rains came down in Chicago, our Locked On White Sox host recaps the first of a two-game series for temporary bragging rights in the Windy City. The Chicago White Sox beat their city rival on Tuesday night, 3-1. to one. Uh, It was a rainy, nasty, cold day on the north side of Chicago. Uh, Sox take down the Cubs uh, in game one of a two-game series. You know, it's just uh, one game in the win column, but uh, for Sox fans, it feels so much more. Uh, had a great outing uh, for Michael Kopech, got into a little bit of problems, uh, but not bad at all. Sox pitching struck out 12 uh, Chicago Cub hitters. Uh, Liam Hendricks closed things down with his sixth save. Uh, Sox offense did just enough, manufactured a couple runs, and then a huge opposite field home run uh, by Tim Anderson. Sox will send Giolito to the hill on Wednesday. Uh, Lucas Giolito has not seen the Cubs since 2019. Sox are looking to get their third win in a row. The NLS biggest rivals met for the first time this season on Tuesday and the Dodgers beat the Giants in L.A. Locked on Dodgers and Giants takes you through Tuesday's late game. Round one goes to the Dodgers. What's up, everybody? This is Jeff from Locked on Dodgers. The Dodgers finally faced the Giants for the first time this season and came away with a 3-1 victory, handing Carlos Rodon his first loss of the year. Rodon looked as great as he always does uh, the last couple of years. Uh, the Dodgers did manage to get to him for a little bit in the second inning. A couple walks and a big hit by Chris Taylor scored the only two runs that Rodon allowed. The Dodgers tacked on an insurance run in the eighth inning on a wild pitch uh, and, and came away with a 3-1 victory. Julio Urias looked great in six innings, uh, came out in what a lot of people thought was a little bit too early, and I'm going to spend 
quite a bit of time on tomorrow morning's episode of Locked on Dodgers talking about the decision by Dave Roberts to pull Julio after only 65 pitches and six innings pitched. Uh, A lot to say about that and a lot to say just about uh, the Dodgers win overall, good team victory, some good defense behind Julio. Uh, The the bullpen looked a little bit shaky but got the job done and uh, overall you're happy to get a win against the Giants anytime you can. So Dodgers win three to one and be sure to check out locked on Dodgers first thing in the morning. Like you do every weekday morning. Thank you for making locked on Dodgers. Your first listen every day, too much Dodgers pitching and not enough Giants offense. Ben Kaspik with the locked on Giants podcast. They are running out a team that is the replacements to the replacements right now with all of the injuries that the Giants are dealing with all of the COVID cases that the Giants have had. And it kind of caught up with them a little bit in this game. And they also ran into some really good Dodgers pitching tonight. Giants pitching was good, allowing just three runs in this game against a very potent and lethal Dodgers offense. But the bats just couldn't get much going. They had some chances, but just couldn't get the big hit. So a quick little two-game series. Giants will look to split it tomorrow. But it is unfortunate to lose the game that is started by Carlos Rodon, who pitched very well. But... We'll break it all down and get you set set for tomorrow on tomorrow's Locked on Giants, where it's your team every day. Coming up, Houston's latest win was a big one for Dusty Baker. This is Locked on Now MLB. Today's edition of Locked on Now is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one source for all of your online sports betting needs. Now that the NHL playoffs are underway and the NBA playoffs are hitting round two, you want to head over there to get your bets in. And of course, the Kentucky Derby is just days away. Just head over to betonline.net. Welcome back to Locked On Now MLB. I'm Kaidani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We've got our experts from around the league to weigh in from games yesterday. Dusty Baker led an MLB team to a win for the 2,000th time in last night's best performance. The best performance. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Houston Astros manager Dusty Baker has a ton of accolades to his name at this point, but he reached another major milestone on Tuesday with a win. Locked on Astros reacts to number 2,000 for Dusty. Are we going to catch Dusty Baker's 2,000th win on a Locked on now? Let's see. Come on, Abreu. Here you go. I'm swinging. That's right. Yeah, baby. Astros win 4 nothing. Dusty Baker, the first manager to take five different teams to the playoffs. The guy that they say invented the high five. The guy that was on deck with Hank Aaron when he broke the record. This bat right here was purchased by my grandfather at that series where he saw Hank Aaron break the record. This bat he gave to me as a kid. This has been a part of my family's life for a long time. And this is a great win for the Astros. Dusty Baker, 2,000 career wins. This guy is a shoe-in for the Hall of Fame. What would be great is if this team continues to achieve what they're expected and they make a strong playoff run and give him his first World Series championship. Stay tuned in to Locked on Astros. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. For myself and Eric the Man Heisman, check us out on YouTube, Apple, Google, or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, we're your team every day. Congrats, Baker. The Mariners couldn't get anything going against the Houston pitching and locked on Mariners isn't happy with how familiar this week offense has become in Seattle. 18 innings and counting and the Mariners are still scoreless down in Houston. This is Titan Gonzalez, host of the Locked On Mariners podcast. Anyone else experiencing deja vu right now? Because I certainly am making this video. The Mariners have been shut out again for the second night in a row, this time by a score of 4 nothing against Christian Javier and the Houston Astros. The Mariners bats cold as ever and frankly utterly unwatchable is getting increasingly difficult watching this lineup go to bat for nine innings at a time the silver lining though this road trip from hell is nearing its end the bad news however the mariners still have to face justin verlander tomorrow afternoon and they're countering with matt brash who has been struggling mightily over his last few starts so by the next time you see us on Locked On Mariners, the Mariners might be under 500 for the first time since the first week of the season. Catch us after the game on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you then. Peace. The Texas Rangers won their third game in a row yesterday when they opened a series against the Phillies in Philadelphia. Locked On Rangers says this is the best baseball Texas has played so far this season.
The Rangers have won three straight and are playing their best baseball of the season. Finally, against some actual contending teams, they have three straight wins against NL East contenders, two of them coming off the World Series champs, one of these coming off a Philly team that desperately, desperately need this win. Some Ranger Rangers on Ranger Suarez crime tonight. An absolutely massive bomb by Mitch Garver, followed by another one from Jonah Heim. Some real catcher power going in this one. And a very, very big pinch hit Zach Rex two-run scoring double. A multi-hit game for Jonah Heim, reached base three times. Another multi-hit game for Marcus Simeon, who looks like he is starting to crawl out of that very, very big hole he has dug himself into. John Gray was was here. He pitched, and I think I think he might not have to go on the IL after this start, which would be a huge improvement. But massive, massive game from Brock Burke, who pitched two in a third innings, only struck out one, but was just very, very good and very necessary in this one. With John Gray coming off the injured list yet again, the bullpen held six innings. They only allowed one run on a Matt Bush given up solo shot. When the Rangers had a three-run lead that made it a two-run lead, that would be the margin for victory. And Joe Barlow comes in, in the clutch, no drama, no nothing, second save of the season. Rangers have a winning streak, and I am feeling much better about this baseball team right now. The rival Red Sox won, trying to keep pace with the Yankees, but Boston had also lost three of four before that, so they're still firmly in fourth place of the AL East. Locked on Red Sox hopes this win is the start of a new streak for Boston. Hallelujah, the Boston Red Sox have won a baseball game. Hey, it's Lauren from Locked On Red Sox. And between Michael Walker's five and two thirds innings, JD Martinez and Raphael Devers going yard, Boston was able to shut out Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, and the Los Angeles Angels for nothing at Fenway Park on Tuesday. Now, Alex Cora did give Michael Walker a quick hook after just 60 pitches. Jake and I are going to break all of this down for you on Wednesday's episode sort of locked on Red Sox. The Cincinnati Reds continue one of the worst starts in baseball history in Milwaukee since he has now lost 20 of its first 23 games and locked on Reds tries to find something for fans to look forward to with this season already looking like a lost cause. Another day, another loss. The Reds have lost 18 out of 19. And 11 in a row on the road. According to John Sadak at the end of the broadcast there, that's the first time since 1945 that the Reds have lost that many on the road. I, I feel like the Reds are going to set a lot of dubious records this year, and I, oof, it's, it's going to be a long year, Reds fans. I really hope they're going to turn it around, but just right now, oof. Oof. This is... Jeff Carr, by the way, from the Lockdown Reds podcast, here to tell you about another loss. Tyler Malley, not good. Over 90 pitches, didn't get out of the fourth inning. A lot of walks, a lot of full counts. Basically, the Tyler Malley that we've known, the Tyler Malley that I thought he was going to grow out of, hey, he was in full blast today, and that was against Brandon Woodruff, who, yes, Tommy Pham and Mike Mostakis hit back-to-back home runs off of Brandon Woodruff, but for the most part, he looked phenomenal. Tied a career-high 12 strikeouts. He's done that twice in his career against the Reds. And the Reds lose again. Tommy Pham and Mike Moustakas tried, but uh, nobody else helped. All right, well, we got tomorrow. For the second straight day, the Arizona Diamondbacks beat the Miami Marlins by a single run in Miami. To learn more on how Arizona has held on late this week, here's our Locked On Diamondbacks host. The D-backs hang on to another nail-biter as they take down the Miami Marlins 5-4. Miller Thomas of Locked On Diamondbacks here. The D-backs got great starting pitching from Humberto Castellanos, who pitched into the sixth inning without giving up an earned run. They got great offense. They knocked out Trevor Rogers, who was an all-star last year. He gave up five earned runs today. Home run to Paven Smith, home run to Christian Walker. First two home runs allowed on the season for Rodgers, but the D-backs bullpen tried to blow it once again in the seventh inning because Jazz Chisholm has been a one-man wrecking crew for the Marlins. He hit a double that scored two. It was called foul on the field, a controversial play, but 
The Marlins end up scoring four in the inning. They cut the game to just one, but the D-backs were able to hold on. Joe Mantiply had a save in the ninth inning. He shut it down. And now, with Madison Bumgarner on the mound tomorrow, the D-backs have a chance to sweep the Miami Marlins. That's it for this edition of Locked On Now MLB. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked On MLB and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Now.